Hey guys, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel today. We need to talk about out of print movies and some ways that you can really avoid getting burnt on buying those types of titles. Hey everyone, so thanks for coming back to the channel today. I'm making this video as sort of a follow up to my 10 Blu-ray buying tips video where I talked briefly about out of print limited edition titles and I got a lot of questions on that and so I wanted to follow up and talk about that topic more in depth. Now, the gist of this video, the basic theme here is really going to be that I don't believe that you should ever buy an out of print title from a place like eBay or Amazon and pay any more than you would typically pay for that movie and I'll explain why. But there are a lot of movies out there that do go out of print. And so basic background for those who don't know, a movie going out of print, or you'll see it on eBay listed as OOP, out of print, basically means that the studio or distributor has stopped making that movie. So whatever's left in stock is all that's there. And once that stock dries up, there's no more. You can only buy it off of the secondary market. So that's where you get to eBay and Amazon. And typically, uh, there are a lot of titles that go out of print that you may have never heard of. There are some big titles that go out of print that are very popular. Think Friday the 13th, that complete collection. And you'll see that when these movies go out of print, a standard movie like Mean Girls, which would typically sell for maybe $10, right? You will find that listed out of print when it was out of print. We'll go into that. You'll find that listed for maybe $30, $40, maybe even $50 or more depending on the title. Horror movies tend to be even higher priced. You can sometimes spend 70, 80, 90 dollars on those. And so I just think it's a really bad idea. And I'll tell you why. I can give you multiple examples here of out of print titles that were out of print for a short time. And sure, that can be frustrating. You can't buy the movie and add it to your collection for a good price, but that have come back into print and are at very reasonable prices. The first couple that pop into my head is, of course, the Friday the 13th box set that was just announced by Scream Factory. That's selling for between $130, $150 on different sites. It was $160 on Scream Factory for their limited edition with the posters and lithographs. And what that does is it makes the previous Friday the 13th set, which I had in my collection and was selling for $300 plus it makes that essentially obsolete and worth just as much as the new Scream Factory set. So if you spend $300 on that title, you're gonna feel really burnt when you could buy a brand new one for 150. There are various other examples of this. Dawn of the Dead is one that I found at a thrift store. I only paid $3, so that's a great deal. But there's now a new 4K release coming. Mean Girls, as I mentioned, was out of print, now has a new release. Cujo, Monster Squad, Trading Places, Apocalypto is one that was very hot for a long time, could sell for $40, $50 on eBay, now has a new release for $14.99. Hot Rod, Andy Samberg Comedy, it's like eight bucks now, it was selling for $50 online. And there's many cases of movies that um, have been out of print and the same distributor brings them back into print probably because they saw the demand online and a lot of people searching for that movie, they figured, well, why not take advantage and reprint some, make some new copies, manufacture some new copies and get them out in the market. For example, the Vincent Price Volume 1 set from Scream Factory, which has been selling for crazy prices on eBay for a couple of years now, they announced yesterday they're re-releasing it. They're putting out a new release. It's probably gonna be 50 or 60 bucks and everybody who spent $250 on it got completely burnt. And I'm bringing this up now because a lot of people ask me, well, how do I find which titles are out of print and uh, how can I make sure that I grab those at the store? And, you know, ultimately what it comes down to is like, collect what you want, don't collect because something's out of print. And if there is a movie that you really want that's out of print, do not pay a premium. Chances are, if that movie is popular enough, it's going to come back into print. Another one that we just found out about yesterday was The Phantom some random Billy Zane movie from 1996. I remember trading a copy of The Phantom on Blu-ray for a copy of Dead Alive on Blu-ray, which is worth 80 or $90. Now you can buy The Phantom for $9.99 on Amazon as of yesterday. There's just multiple cases where you, you really don't wanna spend because these aren't truly limited editions. 
it's not like sports cards. It's not like, um, I'm trying to think of other things that are like highly collectible, like limited editions from Arrow Video are different. Sports cards, like if you want a 2018 card and it's not 2018 anymore and they're not making them, it's gonna be more expensive. They're gonna be hard to find, right? Um, you know, cars, you want a 1965 Chevy? Well, you know, they only made them in 1965, so they're limited and there's a real value there. But movies do not have that same investment value. And so my recommendation to you is only buy out of print titles at a great price. If you find Dawn of the Dead at a thrift store for $3, that's a no brainer, pick it up. If you found Apocalypto for $2, $3, pick it up. If you find a copy of Dead Alive on Blu-ray, pick it up. But my suggestion is go sell it on eBay and use that money to buy other things for your collection while you wait for a new release of that movie to come out. I can tell you from experience that I purchased Dawn of the Dead. I kept it for a little bit. I watched the Blu-ray. I sold it on eBay and I made 20 times back what I spent on it and I used that money to go buy other things for my collection. I know there's a new 4K coming of Dawn of the Dead so I moved that title and got rid of it. I did the same thing with Apocalypto. I did the same thing with Dead Alive. I got a copy of Dead Alive on Blu-ray. I watched it. I sold it on eBay for $100 last year, and that's okay. I don't feel like I need to see it again. I watched it once. I sold it to somebody who desperately wanted it and was willing to pay the price, and so better for me, better for you if you have it, and chances are Dead Alive will get re-released at some point. It's a Peter Jackson movie. There's rumors he's working on it in 4K. I'm sure I'll be able to pick it up again at a reasonable price, and I'm okay with making $100 when I bought that for 10 and you know upgrading to other movies in my collection. There's also other ways you can get movies that people think are out of print. So an example is a movie called Terror Train from Scream Factory. It was a collector's edition. Jamie Lee Curtis, one of her first movies after the Halloween series. It's a horror slasher movie. And the Scream Factory collector's edition was selling for like 40 or $50 on eBay. And on Scorpion releasing, another distributor must have got the rights to it. Now they're selling a copy for $20, and it's essentially the same thing. You can find this with also some of the Criterion titles, which are very expensive. The Man Who Fell to Earth, which was a David Bowie movie, is notoriously one of the most expensive out-of-print titles to buy until Lionsgate put out a new release for an anniversary edition they got the rights back and you could buy that box set for $20. The Third Man is also another one from Criterion that's very expensive. You can buy the UK from Studio Canal for like $15 off Amazon UK, or you can spend $100 and buy the Criterion Blu-ray off of Amazon. The Third Man is one that I also found on a deal online. I paid $5, I sold it for $100. I was able to get literally dozens of more movies rather than holding on to this one copy, which at some point will probably lose its value. So that's just, the, I, I wanna make that very clear. Like if you're one of those people who's been holding on to movies and you view them as some sort of an investment, don't do that because they really will not go up in time. Like the value doesn't raise. If you were holding on to your Vincent Price volume one set because it was selling for $250 and you were like, well, when it gets to 400, I'll sell it. And now Screen Factory announces they're putting a, a re-release out there for 60 bucks you know, you've, you've missed out on the opportunity, first of all, to earn yourself $150 or $200 by selling it. And you could have put that towards buying this new release for a reasonable price when it came out. So I would always, if a movie has value and it's going crazy on eBay, personally, I would sell it. Sell it, buy more movies for your collection that aren't out of print, they can get it at a reasonable price, and then rebuy that movie when it inevitably comes out again. Now this isn't 100%, like some movies, yeah, they won't, uh, get a Blu-ray re-release. There's a lot of movies out there that you may never see on Blu-ray again, but you have to think about what the movie is. Jackie Brown is an example. That's selling for like 70 bucks on Amazon right now, and it's a Quentin Tarantino movie, right? And it's the only standalone release of Jackie Brown. It's available on Blu-ray. This is in the U.S. at least. So the thing you can do, first of all, check other countries. If you're in the U.K., check the U.S. If you're in the U.S., check the U.K. Try to buy a region-free copy. But the other thing you need to think about is Jackie Brown is a movie by a very famous director. There's rumors of him doing 4K transfers. What are the chances that Jackie Brown gets re-released in a box set or gets a re-release because it's a Tarantino movie? I'd say chances are pretty high. So why would you spend $70 on that title? And I say the same thing about horror movies too. 
Friday the 13th, iconic horror franchise. Everybody wants the complete collection. There were some rights battles, legal issues. Eventually you knew that was going to get worked out. So why would you spend $350 on a box set when you can now buy a brand new box set with new transfers for $200 less than that? I think it's just about smart shopping and knowing what you're looking for. If you're looking for a super obscure horror movie that you know is probably never gonna get the love it deserves, is not gonna be a high selling item, then yes, you may have to dish out a little bit of money to add that to your collection. But I see too many people spending $50 on Mean Girls, $50 on Monster Squad, Trading Places, um, crazy money on Dawn of the Dead, or the Halloween set, like they spend crazy money on that, and chances are those are all going to get a re-release and you're probably gonna have buyer's remorse when it's all said and done. So that's really it for this video. Uh, this came up because I'm seeing re-releases of a lot of out of print titles recently. Could be due to the pandemic and the fact that we have no new release movies coming out, so they're going back to catalog titles. Could be due to demand. There's more demand for physical media. They're gonna re-release some titles. I don't know what it is, but I'm seeing more and more of it, and I hate seeing people get burnt or spending stupid money on out of print titles on eBay. So hopefully this is some good advice for you as a fellow collector. And if you do have these titles sitting around, it doesn't hurt to sell. It really doesn't hurt to sell. The chances are if it's one of these popular movies, it's going to come out again. I'm really kicking myself for not having sold my Friday the 13th set personally back when it was getting $300, $400. I did end up selling it to pay for the cost of the new set, which I am purchasing but I could have got double and I kicked myself for not getting rid of that the same way I did Dawn of the Dead, Dead Alive, The Third Man, The Phantom, Apocalypto, all these other movies that I literally made 20, 30 times as much as I paid off of somebody else who was willing to pay it. But don't be that person. Make your money, sell your movies, rebuy them when they go on Amazon for $9.99 in a year and you'll be a happy camper. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully that was helpful. That gives you some background on out of print titles and sort of how that works, what to watch out for, and really how you can make some, some good money off of them if you can find them at the store. The best resources for out of print titles for me, there's a blu-ray.com forum that is a running list of all the out of print titles. That's a good place to look, that'll give you an idea of what's out of print. So if you are at a thrift store, a yard sale, or even searching online, Facebook Marketplace, whatever, and you come across those movies, that's a great way to buy them for a good price, know what you're looking for, flip it, sell it on eBay, and make yourself some good money to spend on other things for your collection or upgrading your home theater setup. So I think that's a smart thing to do. I recommend it. I don't recommend buying from the resale market though. I recommend being a seller on the resale market and selling to those people who are just so desperate that they can't wait and are willing to give you 10, 20, 30, 40 times as much as you paid. It's gonna help your wallet. You're gonna feel better about it in the long run. I promise you. So thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like this video. I'm sure this might be a little controversial or you know, rough some people up who maybe spent a bunch of money on an out of print title, but I'm just trying to give you the truth here. I know how the industry works. I know how these re-releases are coming. Like it's, it's, you're going to continue to get burnt if you do this. So, you know, to each their own, you want to spend the money on a big title, go for it. But uh, hopefully you take my advice and start making money off out of print titles rather than spending money on out of print titles. So thanks for watching again, make sure you follow me on Instagram, check out all the other links down in my description. I really appreciate that. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you very soon.